Well, maybe there's a life lesson out of this. What can we learn? Children, what can we learn from that? Jocelyn, any thoughts for me? No, I'm kidding. Um, okay, well, good morning. Thank you, Pastor McLennan, for the opportunity. My name is Amos Tarpa. I know some of you, and some of you might um, uh, be new. I grew up in Nigeria, came to the United States for my bachelor's degree in chemistry uh, in 2007. Uh, came in January of 2007 to the University of Wisconsin in Superior, and then uh, went on to do some more schooling, ended up in North Dakota, and now we're in Texas. That's another big story. I only share some of that just to kind of give you context if you're wondering. I'm coming to 903 Church, who's this guy? Well, the Lord has uh, given us an opportunity to uh, you know, be a part of a body here at, at this time. At such a time as this, I believe that the Lord made a way for me to meet Pastor McLennan. And I just said, I want to be his friend. And I praise God that he's been a great friend to me. We had great breakfast together yesterday and had great times chatting together. I think that he and I might just win the Nobel Prize someday. But anyways... Um, Today, I'm going to pray before we get started with our passage from Luke, uh, Luke 11. So it's going to be behind you. Uh, I'm not worried about the water because, you know, it protects me basically, so nobody can run around me, so I'm protected. So, we're going to go to Luke 11. But I want to pray. I want to pray because uh, the Bible calls us to pray, but also because there's some of our members of people who are sick and, and just... Spend a moment to pray for them, and I want to encourage you to also, uh, you know, just, I'll give you a moment to just reflect and just pray about whoever is on your heart right now. Let's pray for those who are sick. Let's pray for those who are lost. Let's pray for those who uh, the Lord puts on our heart. And so we'll do that, and then we'll dive into His Word. So let's take a moment now and just pray. Um, Father, your word says, if we confess our sins, that you are faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I just, even as I pray now, Lord, just recognize that I need to pray more for the lost. I need to intercede. And Father, I pray and ask that you just forgive me my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And Father, I pray for those who are sick, Lord. I just pray that you will touch their bodies and work in their lives in a mighty way today, Father, that they will know that you are with them, Lord, even in difficult times, even in times of illness, that, Lord, you are the great physician, you are a healer, you are a restorer, Lord. I just pray, pray that you restore them, Lord, to strength and good health. I pray, Lord, for families that have illness, Lord, that comes regularly, that, Father, they will not lose heart. Father, I pray for encouragement in a mighty way right now, Lord. I pray for the court family, the court family, Lord. I just thank you for their lives. I thank you for Jason's heart to serve, Lord, and I just thank you for his life. I pray you bless him in a mighty way and bless Tina now, Lord, in a mighty way. I pray you be with Sonia and Brad too, that you bless them in a mighty way and meet them at the point of their need. And Father, I pray for anyone else here today who's hurting in any way, Lord, that Lord, you would just please do a work in their hearts and meet them at the point of their need. Help us to know that you are with us. I thank you, Lord, that you are with us, Lord. I thank you that your spirit is in those, Lord, who profess your name and, and, and who call upon the name of Jesus. And Lord, I just pray that you help us to keep our eyes on you, to turn our eyes to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So Father, as we look at your word today, I pray we'll be reminded to be a light and to, to light the lamp that you've given us, to shine your light, which starts with the work that you've done in our hearts, in lighting the fire in us. So Father, please heal with us today and bless this time in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much again, Pastor. Luke chapter 11. I have a song that uh, Brother Junior, if you don't mind, will play in a second. I'm just going to read the passage. And I want you to listen to the lyrics of this song and remember this. This is a short song, but I hope you go home and play it over and over again. Um, the text says, No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lampstand, that those who come in may see the light. The, the light. There is wisdom at work here. It is foolish to light a lamp and then to hide it under a bushel, especially if we're talking about 20 AD. 
Imagine back in the day, you light a lamp, I mean, and you're going to hide it? Not at all, right? You want to let it shine. Now, we are spoiled in this day and age because of a couple of people. And one of them is actually on this shirt. This is a shirt someone made for me at a school I started in Minnesota. It says Maxwell, Faraday, Wilberforce, and Euler. You're going to hear those names today. These are like my four favorite people in the world. But one of them, this is, I'm talking about ancient times. My wife, of course, today is my favorite person. But uh, in ancient times, these guys were like the best. And one of them was Michael Faraday, middle school dropout because he was poor, but he's the greatest experimental physicist of the 1800s. What do all these four people have in common? They love Jesus. They love the light. And they're the greatest in their various fields. But Faraday is part of the reason you and I have electricity today. That's the point I was trying to make. Back then, they didn't have electricity. They needed these lamps, which we still use in Nigeria. But let me let Brother uh, Junior play a song, and then we'll go from here. My spirit is with me, but my flesh is so weak, like the fire. Why 
praise the Lord that some of you here really take the words children of God seriously. You are shouting for joy. Praise God. Okay, Matthew 5. That's where we see that passage from. Today we're going to look at Luke 11, 33 to 36. Just four verses. Happy Mother's Day again. We're going to break our message into two sections, but I'm actually going to start with a few applications and then we'll go down. The first application has to do with what does it look like to have this light of Jesus shining through us and in our lives? What does it look like in daily life? Part of it is we have to talk about purpose and wisdom right away. Notice that it says that no one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place. The first thing here is there's effort involved. He has lit a lamp. Lighting a lamp takes effort. In our culture, effort is not emphasized. We, it takes effort to make a marriage work. It takes effort to be a good child to your parents and encourage them. It takes effort to take out the trash. The trash doesn't just take itself out yet, right? At this point, you have to take it out. And the danger of our culture is that we're not exercising muscles such that we are getting weak in areas we need to be strong. If you don't exercise certain muscles, they get weak over time. Example, times tables and facts. If you Google everything, you wouldn't know the times tables and facts. If Google were to break down in America today, we are in trouble. Because people will not know much. Because a lot of what they know, hey, let me Google that. Hey, what's the capital? Let me Google that. And I'm not bashing anybody on this, but we only have 50 states in America. We should know the two, the, the two letters of the symbols of the state. But I've been to certain places and they're like, wait, is that Minnesota, MN? Yes, it is. I'm not insulting anyone, but I'm just like, can we like apply ourselves to like have some facts down? Starting with God's word. Where's the memory verses? Growing up as a child, it's like, we try to do that, right? Today, who talks about memory verses? Who talks about memorizing anything? But we need to hide God's word in our hearts that we may not sin against him. That word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. There's a path of the lamp that guides you in the immediate term, but then the light for your path, which guides you in the long term. God is our light. Our lives in the present, our lives in the future depend on God. My heart breaks. I'm going to start with the number four application, which is, our daily lives. So I'm going to talk about applications to mothers, fathers, children, and work. Okay? Those are the four applications. I wasn't going to go there, and I'm going to wait, because I need to thank mothers. So let's pause. Mothers, happy Mother's Day. Your life and your work matters and counts, even when nobody tells you that. Mothers, thank you. I am who I am today, partly because of my mother. My, my dad had to work in a different state as an electrical engineer, and so my mother took care of us when he was gone. And she moved, at one point she left her job as a nurse so that she could come take care of us. My mother was there for me in boarding school, buying all the outfits, which is another day story about what that looks like. But what it takes is literally going in the rain sometimes to find the shoes they must need. And it was like to look cool back then, so she was trying to help me. But um, anyways, don't mind me, I've repented of my ways of caring about people in that way. But she would literally cry and say, Amos needs a shirt, let me help him with that. Amos needs to get his books, let's figure that out. And my dad, of course, helped support all of that. But mothers, thank you. Thank you for what you do. One of the mothers that comes to mind, I want to tell you the story of a mother who has influenced the world till today. There was one mother, okay, there are many. But her name is Susanna Wesley. She had 17 children, and two of them were John and Charles Wesley. I don't know if you know this, but the reason why America is what it is today is because of a man named George Whitfield. Without George Whitfield, I don't think we would be what we are today. America kind of cheated. They cheated because they had the Bible closer to their roots in the beginning. You, you, you kind of cheated. And today, today, people are despising the very thing that made America what it is. We need to go back to the Word. There is no other way for a nation to flourish without God's Word. Susanna Wesley had these children, and one of them by the name of John almost died in a fire, but he survived. We praise God for his life. And these brothers were clergymen, but they didn't even know if they were saved. For the, like John wasn't sure. He thought he just needed to do the good works. But George Whitfield in, worked with Charles Wesley, and Charles Wesley and John Wesley, they became saved. Think about the influence England had in America there. They got saved. And let me tell you why Susanna Wesley's influence is here today. Because on that shirt I had, there was a man by the name of William Wilberforce. Wilberforce encountered John and Charles Wesley. And he became a believer in college. 
William Oberforce went on, if you don't know this, a very wealthy background, he went on to fight for the end of slave trade in England back in the 1700s, and it rippled across the ocean, it ended shortly in the 1800s. God's word did a work in a man's heart which transformed many people after that. And today we have so much freedom because it goes back to God's word. But it started with the mother, Susanna Wesley. Isn't that interesting? What one mother can do, and believe it or not, when slave trade was happening in West Africa, they actually were taking them out of a place called Lagos. I went to school in Lagos. I went to the place they took the slaves from. Like I understand the story. But praise God for his word. There's freedom in Christ. There's freedom in our lives today because of a mother who instilled something in her children, who instilled something in a man in Willow Mobile Force, who was sick most of the time. But that's another day's story. You can watch the movie called Amazing Grace to see his story. Mothers, your work is wonderfully, uh, some of it's wonderful, but it's wonderfully forgotten sometimes by society. Sometimes they tell you to, why don't you go do this? Why don't you go do that? No, you do what God has called you to do. As Pastor McLennan reminds us regularly, be faithful. If he's called you to be in a certain station, be faithful there. And do not allow the world to tell you how you need to do it. Look at God's word. And it goes back to raising our children, praying for our children, and pointing them to Jesus Christ. Mothers, thank you. Number two, fathers. I'm just saying this briefly. It's not Father's Day. Fathers, thanks for what you do. But we need to set a legacy. We need to lead our families by God's grace. And one of those men that led that legacy is a man named Jonathan Edwards, who also lived around the time of growth with you. I'm going to give you guys an assignment as a teacher. I'm sorry I do that. But I don't know if you know this. The highest IQ of human history existed in the 1700s. The greatest mathematicians, physicists, philosophers, and classical musicians all lived in the 1700s. Newton, Euler, Gauss, I could go on and on. Benjamin Franklin, whatever. Isn't that interesting? What happened that led up to the 1700s? The printing press in the 1450s, the Reformation in the 1570s, and so on and so forth. Could we argue that the Bible laid the groundwork that really caused an, an explosion? I believe so. So we praise God for that. But I bring up Jonathan Edwards because I don't know if you've looked at his legacy. Presidents, vice presidents, Supreme Court justices, on and on and on. Fathers, we need to blaze the trail. And here's the good news today, my friends. No matter what your past, today's a new day. If you're a mother here and you say, man, I wish I did better on ABC, today's a new day. If you're a father here saying, I wish I did ABC, today is a new day. Yesterday's gone. Let's move forward. Amen? Okay, children, obey your parents in the Lord. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Your parents love you. They want the best for you. They've been there before. Life is too short to repeat other people's mistakes. One of the passages that burns in my heart that literally before I left Nigeria, this was the passage that was vibrating in my heart when I was traveling around secondary schools and I wrote my first book by God's grace at about 18 and then the U.S. Embassy called. When I wrote that book and this all happened, what was the passage that was driving my life? Ephesians chapter, I'm sorry, Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 1. That's the passage that burns in my heart every day. And that's why whenever I get an opportunity to share with young people, it's hard for me to say no because this passage burns in my heart. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Guys, I'm not mad at anybody. Nigerians are just known to shout. So please, let's get that out of the way. Let me repeat what I just said. Remember now your creator in the days of your youth. Young people, you only have one life. One life. It will soon be gone. Only what's done for Christ will last. Your parents love you. Listen to them. The Lord has placed them in your life to guide you. Listen to them and follow their directions. In the book of Proverbs, over and over again, it says wisdom, wisdom, wisdom. This culture, and I say this with all humility and respect the best I can, the American cultural moral fabric is broken. Do not take any wisdom from it. Take it from God's words. Make time daily to read his word. Amen. When I come out for breakfast, my mother will turn to me, Amos, what did you learn? Children, obey your parents. And I know we have some very young children, 
And God has blessed me with seven mathematicians and scientists. They can do anything they want with their lives. I'm not opposed to it. They just need to get a bachelor's in math first. But I'm not opposed to that, right? I I'm kidding. Physics is fun too. But the point <laughs> is that children obey. Your parents have been there. Like imagine you're walking in a path and you don't know what's at the end. But somebody comes and says, I've been there. I can lead you. Why not? Why bump into the walls? Why bounce around? Nine, Psalm 90 verse 12, one of our passages, Psalm 90, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Human life is the only created entity that does not know its expiration date. Human life is the only created entity that does not know its expiration date. I don't know how long I have on earth. I don't know how long. So every day, when the day starts, thank you, Lord, how can I live for you today? D.L. Moody, apparently, I think it's a famous story, but Pastor McLennan can correct me. I think they had a fire in Chicago, and apparently he preached a message that I think he maybe didn't share the gospel as clearly as he wanted, and then there was a fire in Chicago, and D.L. Moody said, I will never preach again without giving the gospel clearly, because I don't know if there's a tomorrow. Do you know how life looks different if you think about it that way? If you think about the fact that number one, you might not be here tomorrow, number two, the people around you might not be here tomorrow, or number three, everything might all end together, just think about how you live your life. That thought of how you live your life, if you apply it, guess what? You apply yourself to wisdom. Amen? So mothers, thank you. Fathers, thank you. Children, let's obey our parents. And lastly, which is what I was going to go to, work. Let's talk about how to shine the light of Jesus at work. Pastor McLennan, I think we're only going to stop at the first verse, it seems. But um, we're going to land our plane soon. There was a man in Scotland. We have about 10 minutes. Sorry about the long intro. But I'm going to just focus on verse 33. It says, No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket, but on a lampstand that those who come in may see the light. And then Matthew 5 says... I'm going to pull up the passage here, and then I'll tell you a story. Actually, Mark 4.21 says, is, is a lamp brought to, to be put under a basket or under a bed? Is it not to be set at a lampstand? But there's nothing hid, hidden which will not be revealed, nor has anything been kept secret, uh, but that it should come to light. If anyone has ears to hear, let him hear. So that's from Mark. And then it says, uh, Matthew 5, 13-16, let me just pull up the, the text. The, the first part of it talks about salt and then light. So let's start from the, the salt part. He says, you are the salt of the earth, but if your salt loses its flavor, how shall it be seasoned? It is then good for nothing but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot by men. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify God who is in heaven. So we're letting the light shine because we're like pointing people. We're literally, Christians are literally like people walking around pointing people to Jesus Christ. By shining the light of Jesus. So how do we shine the light of Jesus in our workplace? I'm going to give you an example of this man named James Clark Maxwell. James Clark Maxwell was born in 1829. He was the first name on the shirt. He was born in Scotland. This is around the turn of the century. America has had a lot going on, and this is, of course, across the pond. And Maxwell was born at a time where, you know, science was in its infancy. At that time in history, they didn't even know that light was electromagnetic radiation. They didn't know what the rays of Saturn were made of. They didn't know much, for the most part, in a lot of those fields. But this young boy was very serious about his academics. At the age of 15, he was publishing math papers. But this boy went on to uh, attend Cambridge University. Well, he went to Cambridge University to establish their lab, and so on and so forth. But I'll tell you two things he did, at least one of them. He was the one who found out that light was electromagnetic radiation. Now, remember in Genesis, what does it say? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And God said, let there be light. Light is a weird thing. Light is a big topic in physics. For many years, people argued that light was a wave or light was a particle. They were both wrong. It's both. Light is a mysterious thing. And Maxwell discovered all of this. Who is this Maxwell? When Albert Einstein was challenged one time, excuse me, Mr. Maxwell, do you stand on the shoulders of Newton? Maxwell said, I don't. 
I sat on the shoulders of Maxwell. Maxwell is the greatest mathematical physicist the world has ever known. A famous physicist by the name of Richard Feynman said, 200 years from now, when our civilization, if our civilization is done, everything will be forgotten except Maxwell's equations. That's how important Maxwell is. Now let me give you a quote by Maxwell. I want to serve God in my generation like, like David served God in his. The greatest mathematical physicist of all time made it very clear that the reason I live is to serve God. My friends, I don't know what your job is. Seek to serve God. And if you need to leave your job because you feel it's not a good fit, then make it clear. But where God has put you, and if that's where you believe you're supposed to be, do it to the best of your ability. So how do we shine the light of Christ in our workplaces? We do it to the best of our ability, number one, and hopefully it matches with our skill sets. Because if you're, if you're in a place you're not supposed to be, and it's killing you inside, then that's a problem that needs to be addressed. And I just really love Maxwell, but this is what scientists today in America don't know about Maxwell. He memorized Psalm 119, word for word. 176 verses, not a story. You guys understand what I'm saying? He applied his mind to God's word. My friends, we need to shine the light of Jesus. We need to remind our culture that the Bible is our base, that the Bible is what allows us to shine his light. A couple of passages and then we'll be done. So you guys got the application for all of us? Fathers, let's keep doing what we do, encouraging our mothers. Well, and our wives. Mothers, if our mothers are alive. Mothers, thank you again. Let's keep praying for our children. And your mothers, don't lose heart for your children who might not be serving the Lord. Keep praying, keep praying, keep, keep encouraging them. Children, appreciate your parents. I get to see my parents, like, well, it's going to change now, God willing, but there was a time I did see my parents for like once every four years in person. And so, children, appreciate your parents. And then all of us, whether you're a student or you are a worker, seek to do your best in what God has called you to do. Colossians chapter 3, work unto the Lord and not unto man. That is shining the light. That is lighting that lamp. That is part of it. So what is this lamp thing about? Number one, we need to make sure that we have the light of Christ in us. That's number one. He puts that light in us. So if you are here today and you do not know who Jesus is and you want to talk to someone, please talk to Pastor McLennan. Reach out. Talk to any, uh, uh, you know, any of the people. Well, Brother Junior was playing guitar. I'm just pointing to people that are easy to find. But come, just talk to someone, right? Don't, don't go another day without asking the question, where am I at with the Lord today? Let him do a work. Call out to the Lord. Call upon the name of the Lord and you'll be saved. It says in, in Acts uh, 16.31. Verses 34 to 36. I'll read them and I'll, I'll close. It says, by close, I mean, I'll just say some comments after. Sorry. But it, it says, um, the lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body is also full of light. But when your eye is bad, your whole body is full of darkness. Therefore, take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no part dark, the whole body will be full of light, as when the light shining of a lamp gives you light. Here's what I'm just going to say. We need to be careful what we bring into our bodies. We need to be careful what we let in. And parents, I'm sorry to say this. I'm not against technology. Technology has its place. By the way, why do cell phones work? James Clark Maxwell. What are the rings of Saturn? James Clark Maxwell. Do you want me to go on? 25 other things I could go on. And, what, and he died at the age of 48. He lived a short life, but he rippled the rest of science, the rest of the world. Kinetic theory of matter, James Clark Maxwell. I mean, how one man can change the world. So let's end with this. Children and parents, I'm gonna end with the most practical example of all and be done. We are living in a day and age of something that has never happened in recent history. It's called unlimited information in my pocket. That could be a blessing, and that could be a curse. It is more of a curse for the youth today. There are over 20 books that have been written on this topic, and I'm not gonna bore you with all of them, but the data is clear. Anything about two hours of screen time is detrimental to a youth. Anything about two hours of screen time is detrimental to the youth. They need to be reading books. 
They need to be playing outside. They need to be building relationships. There's no other way to sugarcoat these guys. But the cell phones might just destroy this generation. There's no other way to sugarcoat it. Why do I bring this up? Because look at what they're letting into their bodies. Now, if they're watching James Club Maxwell for seven hours a day, I'll allow that. Okay? Yeah. But is that what they're doing? Is that what they're doing? I mean, there's apps that literally exist to shorten the attention span of a generation that already had the attention span of a goldfish. We, we, we were already like 10 seconds. Oh, now we're going for four seconds? Yep. You are not against cell phones. I'm just saying let's be wise. Parents, I'm not trying to make you feel guilty. I get it. Sometimes it's easier to tell people to just go do stuff. So then give them some good books to read. Tell them to go serve in the community. Maybe you'll get some joy by serving others. I love you guys. I'm not mad at anybody. I just, my heart just burns for a generation that is being deceived in mass when God's word is available to guide us as we need to go. Amen? Light and righteousness go together, and that's my call today. Let us walk in righteousness in the station that God has called us to. Father, I thank you for mothers. I thank you for all they do for us. From carrying pregnancy through, to, through uh, child delivery, all the, the pain and the suffering, and then childbirth itself, which is such a painful thing to just to watch, I can't even imagine. They do all that for us. And then they care for us when, they're, when we're born. And they pour into our lives. And they weep when we go astray sometimes. And, and then they rejoice, of course, when we're back on track. Father, I pray that you reward these mothers in a mighty way. That they will just see your hand at work in their lives. It is more blessed to give than to receive. And mothers are the perfect example of showing that selflessness at its max. So Father, I just pray you bless the mothers in this place. And I just pray again for those who are hurting, that you will meet them at the point of their need. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins so that we can have new life, so that we can shine your light. Help us to shine your light at our workplace by working unto the Lord and not unto man. I just pray for the children who are here today. Maybe there's a conviction of, oh, I, I did something wrong. I pray they will see that there is forgiveness for them, even in whatever situation, Lord. I'll end with this song. Created me a clean heart, O oh Lord, and renew right spirit within me. Anything else?
要思